Okay, and and we will come with uh, uh, four terms of most important words in Chinese culture, and this is like basis of the Chinese culture. Uh, after these words, maybe you understand more about what you have come across. At first, is means. It's uh, basically face, and what 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 is means? That's the whole Chinese life is about uh, a Chinese person's life. We can say it's all about means. But what is means? It's first is your um, social status, like you are a school principal, and you are a director of a company, and you are sort of in a higher position, so you have means. And of course, your financial strength is like, I earn 10,000 euro per month, and the average is 1,000. So if I earn more, I have more financial strength, I have means. And a possession or people around you, for example, you have a super luxury house, you have a BMW car, and the, it's also a, a, a way to show the means. And also the people around you, maybe you think, mm, why people around you is uh, important. Like you will tell people, today I get a dinner with the mayor. <laughs> You have means. It's, it's like only you are the important person, and then there will be important person around you. If you say, oh, today I just with my friend and go to eating, that everybody go to eat and everybody they do things with their friends. But if you go with somebody important, and then you are special, you have means. And, but it's, it's all about like uh, uh, power or, or, or money, but sometimes it's not. Like if you are very capable of doing one thing, it's like, okay, in this company, there is uh, um, this, this uh, car problem or whatever mechanic thinks, only you are the person can, can, uh, can have a solution of this. So you also have means. It's not about how much you earn, but you are the only one can solve this problem. You are capable of doing this. You have means, or you speak you speak a uh, good French, and when you go to south of uh, Belgium, and you can you can speak fluent uh, French, and or you also have means. So this kind of things it also shows your means. But I'm not sure whether you come course in China, and uh, in in front of uh, a reception of a restaurant, and the people will say, huh, I will pay," and another said, "I will pay." You you don't know how they are saying. You think that they are fighting. Yeah, because the generosity is also a way to 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 say that and to show that you have means. Because, yeah, I'm generous enough. I always pay, so the people will come to me. They always get free trade. I'm the person to pay, so I get more means. <laughs> and the last is that the the most positive part from the means. Maybe you will think, oh, it's all about they want to show they have money and they have this and that. But also they want to earn, they, they want to earn respect from others. If you say, okay, today I, I get my task is that I need to do this uh, and this thing within a certain time or uh, what kind of standard. And then I don't want to lose my means. I don't want to lose my like my respect from others. I need to earn respect, so I will do my best to to do this uh, this uh, um, this task or whatever. So, do your best. It's a positive way to not losing means. So that's the same thing that you will earn more means. So that's uh, that's more like a self discipline. Like in order not to lose means, I always do my best. When we are kids, we do our best for all the study, and when we work, and we do all of the best to uh, yeah, for the job, whatever. So, do your best. That means you get more means. So all the Chinese people's life is about means. So maybe that's why you got answer that uh, situation. That did I do good? Of course, you did that best. If I say <coughs> you are. Uh, yeah, this is not good enough. So that I'm not giving you means. Yeah, so I'm I'm criticizing you. So that's not good, because I want means. I think you want it too. So that's that's a cultural difference. And myself experienced that I participate a Dutch course, and um, I find this teacher just don't have really good ways to teaching, and we are we are adults and. She asked us to join the like puppets and those things to practice Dutch and all the other things. And I don't think that's, that's good. And so I, I complained to the manager. 
uh, and the manager said, you need to first uh, communicate with the teacher to tell him you did <coughs> this not, not right and you can, you can improve in this and all that. that. Tell, tell him or her what you want. I said, no. How could I tell the teacher? The teacher is not good enough. How could I criticize somebody one-to-one? Uh, -one? It's even more difficult to tell your teacher. Say, you did this not good. It's not good enough. No, we cannot do that. We, it's just a big loss of means. I don't want the teacher to suffer this. And myself, I cannot do that. So we want to give people means so we don't criticize them. And especially the boss, they come to have a meeting. Everything will be fine. There's no problem. Okay, what's the difference? <coughs> criticizing face-to-face -face or criticizing? Oh, from the email, it's, it's like not face-to-face. Um, not -face. That's, that's a bit easier. That's, that's a bit easier not to say face-to-face -face is the, most, the worst situation. It's strange because for us, it's just the opposite. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, I also get suggestion. It's like if I talk, if I want to talk a uh, certain um, aspect, or especially, and the <laughs> like the how much I should be paid, what I should be paid. I just find it so difficult to tell to talk with people face to face. I just think that, oh. You pay me like 20, I, I think I need 25. I find this negotiation face to face is very difficult. Especially saying, okay, you're not generous enough because you should pay me more. Those, those issues. Is that clear about me and the? So, do you have any uh, suggestion how to how over which is that situation? Because if we go there and finish a certain work, mm -hmm. and we don't get the proper feedback, we cannot fix it. And after that, we come home and we get the feedback here. Yeah, then, then we feel it was a waste of trouble. We, we didn't do our job. So then we have to go back there again and try to fix But we fix it and then we don't get the proper feedback again. So it's a, it's a cycle which... Uh, yeah, I think first uh, you, will, you will bring it like more, uh, like more private. It's not to see like, okay, this is for... I need to tell my boss. It's like... Maybe you will you you from it a uh, private perspective will say okay let's let's have a relaxed talk. I really want to know how I can improve. I really appreciate your suggestion, and this is this is one way. And there are a lot of ways to bring it into private. It's like you go to with them to have a dinner, or you go to with them have a karaoke or drink tea, all the certain kinds of Chinese way to bring it more private. And, and the second suggestion is that through the right asking, through the quite, uh, right question, you might say that the, the specific point, very detailed, I don't know that, that the mechanics uh, perspective, maybe you will just say, from this point, this, this thing, and from this button, can we have a, a bit improvement of this button? It's better than have a very big question and your Chinese colleague maybe even don't know where to begin. Maybe there are so many and he just feel ashamed to tell you all. Maybe you say, oh, I find this button, this is not perfect. What is your suggestion? Do you have the same, same feel as me? Maybe you feel in the same thing. I really know, maybe you, seem the, you feel the same thing exactly the same as me. So I'm thinking maybe I want to improve that. So the right question, really asking the specific question and then to, to bring it into private. I think that's, uh, that will be better than this. Today, this is a working hour and now we need to talk about the problems and now we need to talk about what we can improve. And from this situation, it's more difficult for them to say because they, they say like they really appreciate you walking, you, you travel so long. And if they tell you all of this negative point, I can imagine that they feel very not fine. Just <laughs> more question about Mianzi. Have you ever idea? Have you ever what? Yeah, what this could be? Networking. Yeah, social networking. Look, and in this is in China, and this is in uh, Western. And maybe you will say, this is my colleague. 
And this is my um, dancing club. This is my school classmates. But in China, it's like, this is my classmates, this might be boss and boss of friends, and also this is my uh, wife's uh, sister's. Uh, um. So all together, because we say this guanxi is very important. But what is guanxi? Guanxi is like who you know, who is around you. More, more important is that if you need help, who can help you? So it could be your uh, sister, or it could be your brother-in-law, or could be your classmates, or could be the school principal of your son's school. So it's all the people you know, and it's when you need help, they will come to help you. So this is this is this this networking, and in in China that networking is more like personal and uh, uh, professional is more go together. Why? Because we doing more business with friends, with somebody you know. Because if you have a private rela relationship, and you will say, oh, I know this guy is a, is a good person. And I have, I have uh, trust in this person. So that's why a lot of cooperation, they start with friendship. Mm -hmm. They start from knowing each other. You know, a lot of Chinese people, they cooperate with their friends. They first have a lot of tea, uh, karaoke, and meal, and then they cooperate with each other. They're doing business together. But for Dutch people, they never see each other before. And they come together, they do business, and after all, they said, oh, let's, can, uh, let's go to have a dinner together. Now, Chinese people do all the preparation, do all of the understanding each other before they do business. So where to start building? Is most of the people they start to build in around you. It's like it's your relative, but it will not stay always at your relative. You need to uh, um, just uh, frequently visit them to maintain your guanxi, to maintain your relationship, and with your boss, and with your friends, and with your business partner. And um, one, one uh, person told me that when you go into China and they visit a factory, they get all kinds of gifts small gift, and they will say, oh, we will send a taxi for you to bring you up. That's what maybe for the Western, country, uh, Western uh, factory, they will not. If you come, and I will tell you, this is the address, come here, and I will tell you maybe uh, you can take a taxi from where, but we'll, I will not arrange that. But in China, they will arrange everything for you. So where to begin, to where to start is from the, from the one around you, the most closed one around you. And how to build that? You spend time with them. Like I said, you go to have a cup of tea with them or coffee, or you eat together with them. Eating is a real culture in China. You eating and doing business. You eating and to know each other. You eating and you do all your job. You do eating, you know all of the parts, the feedback you need. Just spend time with them, being friends with them, and just just to, to, became, to have the friendship and build up the guanxi with them. And uh, of course, that's mutual. That's about uh, um, a bit, but it's always, the guanxi is always mutual. It's like what I need from you and you need from me. Uh, it's more about the like, government uh, things. So everybody, they want to have, uh, have a good guanxi with the uh, government or mayors, so if they want to do any business, they will always get financial support or political support. But the mayor don't need anything from you. <laughs> so the, you, you want to spend time with the mayor, but the mayor doesn't have time to spend with you. And then, what the mayor want? And he might uh, want uh, cash. So that's where the corruption started. And did you notice that, I'm not sure whether you involved in this uh, paperwork in China. And because they, a lot of things you think that's easy in the, in the rules of the government, but it just cannot go through. <coughs> because they, they, the people who having this uh, power to say yes or no, and they need, to, they need you to show friendship to them. So that's also a way to maintain guanxi. It's like in China, a lot of uh, um, schools or what companies, they very frequently go to visit police, uh, police office, go to visit the tax office. 
you don't need to in, in Holland or Belgium, but in China you do. Because it's very easy things, easy permit, you cannot get get that. For, uh, like according to the rule, maybe you should get this permit in three days. But if you don't have a good guanxi, you might wait three, three months. Yeah, the art of building guanxi is that basically my suggestion is that when you go to China, how you build your guanxi with your uh, colleagues. I think always the little gift from your own country, that's always nice. That's also something special. So you can always bring chocolate <coughs> or something special to show your friendship. Yeah, that will begin from the small things. And this is a group, but do you understand this uh, picture, from this picture, what do you see? What do you see from this? This is one group. This is my primary school. And I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see from this group? Their uniforms. Next. My middle school. Here I am. <laughs> and high school. <laughs> here I am. And so all of this group, it's like more or less they are the same. Like the uniform, the haircut, the clothing, even some of them not wearing the uniform. They are more or less the clothes. So the group is also a very typical Chinese term. Everybody have the same clothing. So you're blending into the group. And for the more of the living alone is that because the social facility in China is not so complete. So you need to work with your um, uh, in-laws and your all of the people you know to get it working. Like if your son wants to go to school, you cannot find a proper school. You need to, find, you need to use some guanxi from the people who you know. So you need to <laughs> live together with some others to get what you need to do. And necessity, that's first the necessity because you need to stay with them. And the education influence is that it's like when we are in school, we have a little flag, a red flag. If you clean your classroom very, very well and you get this flag, every grade for um, about seven class, they have this one flag. So you need to work hard to get this flag. And this, this group, it's your class. It's so important because if you today didn't clean well and then you are really ashamed to your group because group is more important than yourself. Group is more important than individual. And blend into the group. You need to have what others have. It's like they have a white shirt. You need to have a white shirt. Otherwise, you're not, you're not fashionable enough and you just be hide. If everybody have an iPhone 6, you need to have iPhone 6. That's why a lot of people, they get in long queues to get iPhone 6, because they want to blend into group. Being different, being, being different could be very dangerous because you will be, you will be like, like of thrown out of the group. And one, uh, one girl is complaining that in the, in the office, everybody have an iPhone, they play in game together. Because she didn't have an iPhone, she cannot play together with them. And she cannot like, and gossip with them because she is basically out. And also being different could be like, it's like the cultural differences situation. You be in difference and then you are very dangerous. If they need to fight somebody, they fight who is dangerous, who is different. We also have a traditional saying is that 枪打出头鸟, if the bird among the five birds want to fly first, he will be the first being shot. So you don't, you don't want to be the first. You don't want to be different. You just stay the same as others. That's also like during the meeting, a lot of people, they keep quiet because they don't want to like show that I'm, I'm, di I'm different. I'm smart. I know better than you. I have a super uh, special idea. No, I'm the same as you. So I keep quiet. And uh, uh, social harmony, that's uh, like we're a group, so we don't criticize each other. We just keep one super group. They, we unify together, we fight together, but we don't criticize, uh, together, criticize each other. Yeah. And uh, leader. So leader is also uh, a very, very important way of living in China. Um, 
leader stands out in, yeah, instead of just one of the others. Yeah, I also heard from uh, your colleagues that uh, from a meeting you talk with your colleagues, but your colleagues just say, just basically deliver a message, but they cannot make a decision. But in, uh, I would first tell my first experience in, in Holland. It's like I go to a school and they said, this is next year you need to teach. They go to have, a, uh, have like an exam uh, subject. And you need to do this, to do that, to do that. So I feel like I'm really responsible to do that. I, I really need to find out the information myself. I really need to know this thing. But in China, you don't need to, because your, your leader will, will decide what you are going to do. That's really what you said is in the different levels of the people you're going to communicate. If you think this level he can make decision, you go to communicate with this person. If you go to one layer <laughs> below, sorry, they cannot make a decision from the financial, from the technique, and from the, all the arrangement of, of administration, just they cannot. So you really need to find the right person to communicate if you really need a permission or a um, like uh, you said, for sort of permission, you need to wait long for the, for the leader's decision. You need to go to the leaders. Because in China, it's still a hierarchy society. So basically, the employees, they do what the leader tells them. The leader will get all the information. They will tell you what to do. They will make the decisions. But now what's better is that different generation that uh, that's gets different now, because a lot of people, they go to study abroad, and they get more uh, like advanced management idea. So it's, it's a bit different. But you still need to find the right person to uh, communicate. And How much does age play a role in this hierarchy? Uh, it's, a, it's a combination of really the position and your age. So if, in the, if, if the same, uh, same position, and you give more respect for the older people. But if, if one is the younger people have a higher uh, position, and one is older people common, and you will com com come to these young people to get decision. Yeah, basically, this is all about these terms and all the, all the um, uh, situations you might uh, come across. And after the end of the section of uh, Eddie, we still have to do, we still do the question and answer. So if you have more questions about whatever the terms, uh, it will still have time to ask. Yeah? 